Hey guys, my name is Ivo and I'm from MyTestedASP.net. As you may already know, in my current video series, I'm talking about Entity Framework performance. In my previous video, I explained the difference between cold and warm queries and how it can impact our performance during the uh, first execution of a particular query. And now I'm going to show you how to uh, solve that problem in a way and even you can do it when a query is a little bit of a little bit slower than you might expect or you might want so I'm going to explain the compiled queries in this video and we're going to see four examples and what exactly a compiled query is when i run a normal query like this one this is be this this will be the query i'm going to pre-compile and reuse when i'm using a normal entity framework query like this one where i'm calling the database dot some table and i am doing some filtering so i'm selecting it doesn't matter actually um, Entity Framework first has to analyze the query, then it needs to compile it. So it needs to extract the birthday, the cower, the owner, the cats. It needs to generate a SQL from that compilation, and then it needs to execute it over the database. Entity Framework is smart, and as we saw, in my previous video, if you haven't watched it, I suggest you watch it. Uh, as we saw in my previous video, when Entity Framework executes a query for the first time, Entity Framework analyzes the expression trees, analyzes the query parts, and caches them. So the second time Entity Framework sees the query, Entity Framework analyzes the expression tree again, but this time it doesn't build the SQL query from it. So essentially, uh, Entity Framework analyzes every time the expression trees, but only the first time it compiles them. So if we if we run to see how this plays we can see that the first time when the query is called we get two seconds which is quite a lot to execute the following query this query is not very advanced but still it's not a simple one because it has a where filter on a uh, in a join and it has to count with a strange filter over a text column so it's not the most difficult query but it's not a simple one so the first time entity framework has to analyze that and it's running code for two seconds the warm query of the, the, the same query but warmed is running for half a second so we saw how entity framework pre-caches these queries and after the first time the, these queries run quite well okay but how to uh, improve that even more we can improve that by compiling queries by ourselves. So essentially what we can do is we can pre-compile the query and don't make entity framework analyze the expression trees, which in advanced queries is quite a lot of operations. So we can boost our query performance even more. How to write expression, uh, not expression, how to write compiled queries. The, sim the simplest way is 
to, to create a new class which contains all compiled queries or you can separate your compiled queries in different classes for example cat queries owner queries and so on it's a good idea to store the compiled query in a static variable because uh, because once the compiled query is compiled the static variable will hold the compiled information for you and it will no longer need, need to be compiled again so essentially new class a static property we uh, we won't be worried about uh, uh deadlocks or race conditions with the static property because essentially we're going to provide the db context each time we want to execute the query so essentially that's a normal function and it's a pure function so it doesn't matter whether it's static or not for race condition scenarios so how to create a compiled query new class static property and the syntax is a little bit ugly we need to create a func of our db context all the parameters we're going to use in our query and to return i enumerable cat family result or just cat family result so essentially i'm returning from the query here either i enumerable or, or either the class i'm going to extract from the database so to say what are these parameters if we go back to the original query in this method i have two parameters h and name start and i use it use them uh, throughout my query for example here and here and the name start here so essentially if your query does not have any parameters you may skip these okay it's important to say that you need to return either i enumerable or either a class otherwise it this uh, compile query will throw exception then what we need to do we need to call ef which is a class from entity framework core dot compile query entity framework 6 has uh, a similar way to create compiled queries but the names are different you can search it on google if you need it so we run entity framework dot compile query this method has an async version 2 if you need it and then you need to return a task enumerable but uh, a sync enumerable but that's uh, that's a minor detail and in the compile query we need to provide a function which provides the query essentially the function needs to have uh, the db context and the parameters here and the query is just copy pasted so if i want to create a compiled query i will create a static func which has the db context the types of the parameters and i enumerable of the result i'm going to get from the database then i'm going to call empty framework dot compile query and i'm going to start another function which gets the db context the in the two parameters and in this one i can just copy paste my query and remove the to list removing the to list is actually important i will show why in a minute and here it is the syntax is a little bit uh, difficult to get at first but trust me it's worth it okay and let's use that query now i'm going to test the uh, performance with the normal stopwatch but as you may already know it's not the best way you can use benchmark.net for fine-tuned performance measurement so what i'm going to run i'm going to run the normal query here one time code then 
afterwards another time when it's warm because anti-framework will, will cache it but still anti-framework will need to analyze the the expression trees every time so that's a little bit of overhead then i'm going to use the compiled query which allows entity framework not to which allows entity framework not to analyze the expression trees it makes a huge difference actually and finally i'm going to run the same query the compiled query but this time warm and we can see that we have quite a lot of performance improvement first the cold query needs one second the warm query needs one third of a second and the compiled queries um, even 10 times faster than the warmed one the compiled cold query still uh, it needs a little bit of time to be compiled but since we're using a static property that static property saves the compilation and afterwards it's warm every time so essentially between the cold query and the compiled warm query we have a huge improvement that's like more than 100 times improvement so again how to use compiled queries you just need to create a static property in a class you may separate the queries in classes for example cat queries owners queries and so on you need to create a func with this syntax if you don't have parameters just remove the parameters and the query will work You need to return an unnumerable of cat family result. If you return something else, it should not work. It's a little bit. It's a me the compile query method. It's how to say it. It's picky. It doesn't recognize the true list statement, so you need to skip it and if you if you are not using to list you cannot return a list here you need to return an unnumerable the other way you can do the same query is if you need to return only one result then you will need to call it first or default or last or default whatever works for you but since this is not the same query, I'm going to return it. But I just wanted to point in which situations the compiled query works correctly. With either first or default, where you return a single result, or with an unnumerable. Otherwise, it will not work. As you saw, it didn't like the to list call. Okay, and before I finish, I would like to thank my sponsors. You may know already that I'm creating an open source projects for ASP.NET. Most of them are fluent assertion frameworks for the web, uh, for your web applications. And my projects allow you to assert and create a strongly typed tests in a fluent manner these projects are created in my free time for now so i am appreciating all kinds of support whether it will be a simple share on social networks a star on the repo or if you decide to become a backer or a sponsor on patreon or open collective i will be extremely thankful if you decide to join some people already did and my current company sponsors are Softuni, smart AT, and noble Hire. if your company wants additional exposure it may contact me Softuni, smart IT, and noble Hire. thank you guys you truly rock
Now let's return to the query. So the positive side of these queries is that you have quite an improvement in terms of performance. The negative sides are that you need to write a little bit of more uglier code in order to use these uh, compiled queries and the other problem is that you don't have a suggestion from the IntelliSense what are these uh, parameters. They are written in argument 1, argument 2, argument 3 and so on. So you need to be mindful what parameters you are passing to these queries. Keep in mind that compiled queries are not a um, solution for all your queries. You don't need to do that because uh, compiled queries will save you a lot of time in more advanced queries like this one where Entity Framework needs to analyze a bigger expression tree. If your query is something like this, db.cats.where cat cat.name equals uh, some cool cat name dot first or default, these queries, which are a lot simpler than this one, will not have such a performance boost um, as the one we saw earlier. So don't use it every time. Use it only when you see fit and only when your uh, your query is getting a little bit slower and it has a huge expression tree like these ones here. So. I believe that was it. I hope you liked the compiled queries. I believe they, they are a nice feature and it should be used in situations where the code queries are a problem in terms of performance or where the, uh, the query itself is a little bit of slower. You may get a huge performance improvement as we saw more than 100 times. It's a huge difference. Okay, guys, that was it for today. And if you like my video, hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment below whether you are going to try compiled queries in your web applications. And again, if you are developing SP.NET Core projects, you may try my testing solution because it will cut a lot of your development time and you're going to have quite less bugs because of the improved unit tests. And if you want to support me, you may consider making a one-time donation or becoming a backer on Patreon or Open Collective. I will be extremely thankful. Thank you guys and